Greetings, friends. My name is Charles Dow. I'm the pastor here uh, of our church in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm here today to try to uh, help us in understanding. You see, I, just like you, have grew up in this American society right here. And with me also being former Baptist and uh, also have a little bit of remnants in the Church of Christ and also some remnants in the apostolic and the Pentecostal doctrines, um, we're coming here today to try to explain to you what is basic, real, true Bible Christianity. You see, in our times, we have had a lot of things that we have done, things that we have inherited, traditions, and ideals that made us feel like that we were Christians. I've discovered over the years that well over 99% of everything that has to do with what we call modern day Christianity is rooted in pagan and heathenism practice. We ascribe here to the King James Version of the Bible, and we believe that this is the inspired word of Yahweh. Now, with this in mind, anything that we're doing today in our society, especially as being what we would call Christians in a society, real true Bible believers, it should line up with what is written in the word. Um, the Bible teaches that we ought to obey God and keep his commandments. Now, in our traditional Protestants or um, religions of today, they tell us that um, you don't have to keep God's word. Now, they will say that you need to keep it to a certain point, but it's really not all that important to do. Well, I disagree with that, and I dissent from that totally, brothers and sisters, because, friends, I believe that we ought to obey God's commandments and keep every single one of them. For instance, let me give you an idea. The three main pillars of what we would call Christianity today, each one of them are rooted, in fact, in paganism and heathenism. You can't find one thing of these three that I'm going to mention to you today written in this King James Version of the Bible. The first one is Christmas. You can't find anywhere in this book right here, in the Holy Bible, that Christmas is even spoken about, much less written about, or even commanded that we should celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. It's not in there. The apostles didn't teach it. Jesus did not teach it. Surely the prophets did not teach it. If you want to find out the truth of where that particular religion or tradition come from, you have no further than to check Jeremiah, the 10th chapter. The second one is, is Easter. Easter is nowhere found in the scriptures at all. I know that you will see the word Easter in Acts 12, 4, but the Bible teaches that these were the days of unleavened bread. The unleavened bread is around the time of the Passover. If you would go and check out this word for yourself, and you would search diligently and find out where that word Easter come from, you will find out that it should not even be written in this book because Easter is not another name for Passover, and neither is Passover Easter. It, um, the word in Acts 12, 4 clearly says, and when the days of unleavened bread, and when it talks about the days of unleavened bread, Acts 12, 3 and Acts 12, 4, the word pesca is that word. And that word is translated some 27 times in the New Testament as Passover. If you read Luke 22, verse 1, you will find out what the answer is. There is no way that an Easter bunny can lay eggs. There is no way that a big fat man can give presents to 6 billion people all on one day what they call Christmas. So Christmas and Easter is not Christianity, but it is pagan. As a matter of fact, the pagans are getting upset that we call these things Christian. I know what our traditions have taught us. I know what our churches have taught us, but if we're not obeying God and doing his word, and if it's not found, rooted in the scripture right here, then it is satanic deception and paganism. The last one I want to mention to you is this thing called Sunday as the Sabbath. Nowhere written in the inspired word of God is there a, a such thing as Sunday called the Sabbath day. Malachi 3.6 declares that I am the Lord and I change not. And that means that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever according to Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The scriptures only speak about the seventh day of the week and not the first. Now, don't believe anything that I'm saying as a man just like many of you. You go and check it out and study to see if what I am saying is so. And you'll find out that a lot of times the reason why people are angry at us today is because we're exposing the lies that keep you, the people, in bondage. 
we ascribe again to the King James Version of the Bible. So the three main pillars of what they call Christianity, Christmas, Easter, and Sunday, the first day of the week, calling it the Sabbath, cannot be found anywhere written in this book. Now, if it's not found written in the book, then what in the world are they doing today? Well, they are serving the other Jesus who Paul warned us about. He said that there was going to be coming another Jesus, another Christ whom he has not preached and he has not taught. Brothers and sisters and friends, you must take this message seriously today. Even the message of salvation has been misconstrued. They tell you to make a decision for Jesus. Where do you find that at in the Bible, written in the pages of this book? They tell you the that you can come to Jesus anytime you want and once you confess of your sins that you're all right and grace will take you all the way through. Where do you find that written that in this book, brothers and sisters? Let me give you a short example here for a second. And we're going to turn over to Matthew, the 19th chapter. And we're going to get probably one of the most purest forms of understanding that we could ever get coming from Jesus Christ, the Messiah himself. If you'd like to contact us before we get into this scripture right here, our information is posted right here on the board, brothers and sisters. And prove all things the scriptures teach and hold fast to that which is good. Let every man be a liar and let God be the truth. Study it for yourself. Look it up for yourself. You're going to find out that a lot of traditions that your mothers and your fathers and your grandparents and great grandparents have inherited has been nothing but lies. And God will not tolerate coexistence with other gods. Over in Matthew, the ninth chapter, at the 16th verse, it says this. And this is a story about a rich young man. And he's asking Jesus, the Messiah, a question. And he says, and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Isn't that the question today, sisters, brothers, friends? Isn't that the question today, friends? Wouldn't we like to know what we can do to inherit eternal life? And the scriptures read on in the 17th verse, and it says, And he said unto them, talking about Jesus the Messiah, Why callest thou me good? For there is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, isn't that the reason why we attend services? Isn't that the reason why we confess of our sins continually on a daily basis, not just one time for salvation purposes? Isn't that the reason why we do it? It's because we really, truly want to be saved in the end. He says, if thou wilt enter into life, look what he says, keep the commandments. Did you hear what he says? Keep the commandments. Now, we live in a society especially with modern-day pagan Christianity. And, and what I mean by pagan Christianity is those who promote Christmas, Easter, and Sunday as the Sabbath day, which there are no biblical foundations for any of those lies. So if we're not serving what the Bible says, then the people must be deceived into serving lies. Now, keep the commandments. Today they tell you you don't have to keep the commandments because grace paid it all and grace did it all for you. Brothers and sisters, Friends, do not receive that lie. Grace is by the means whereby you are continuing to obtain salvation because of the atonement of what Jesus Christ did because of our wretched state and our fallen nature. Because we sin against the Holy God by, by siding with Satan himself. And if we have grace, according to the scripture, it says that the grace of God have appeared unto all men. And this grace does something. It teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live righteously, soberly, and godly right now in this present world. So Jesus was telling the young man that if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Do you know the most transgressed commandments? There are actually three of them that are really transgressed, even though all of them are broken in our time of society today. Thou shalt not covet. Well, covetousness is one that is broken continually on a daily basis. Uh, thou shalt not bear false witness. That is broken every single day. People slandering, backbiting. These are nature problems. This is a sin nature problem. Then there's the, the scripture of idolatry. You wear crosses and, and you have trinkets and emblems of, of angels and, and things that are created in heaven above or that is earth beneath. And you have no idea that Exodus in the 20th chapter forbids such idolatry. And the fourth commandment which is to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Now the Bible teaches...